Mars is very inhospitable. So like we can't, there's hardly any air and we can't breathe if there was. There's no soil, so you can't grow anything. We know that the atmosphere is full of carbon dioxide, so the risks are very high. Um, you'd really have to rely on life support systems. There's a lot of rocks. Um, there's a lot of mountains and ridges. Um, so there's a lot of danger. Red and barren. Um, desolate. But Mars is, um, it's a very mysterious planet and it's something that has always drawn people to look more closely at it, which is something that um, kind of drives missions like this. It's a, a bright red target. <laughs> hey there, happy I'm making dreams come true with your uh, radio announcer business. Uh, look forward to your fun and quirky jokes and news bits. I guess a couple, three months. Three fucking months. So uh, there's a lot of research going on worldwide uh, that is helping to enable Mars exploration. And a lot of it, of course, is the technical stuff. You know, how do you safely send humans to Mars? What's the vehicle going to be like? What the fuel is going to be like? Um, how are you going to have water systems on the surface? All of that. Um, so we fit into the, all of that picture as uh, within, within the human research program in NASA. And within that, we're part of the behavioral health and performance um, program. So. That group and that set of research is all looking at uh, human behavior uh, over these long duration missions and how it affects performance. When NASA is planning these long duration space missions, uh, what they do is they have a set of risks. Uh, and those risks are either colored green for acceptable, yellow for um, not solved but okay, and uh, red for a problem. And NASA will not send a human mission to Mars while there are still red risks on the list. And some of those risks have to do with crew psychology and crew cohesion in isolated and confined environments. This is what we wore all the time. It's a sociometer and it measures your interactions with each other. So it lights up when you're talking to someone. When you're looking at long duration human space travel, you're naturally gonna have humans as part of these complicated systems. So uh, the human component, if it breaks, is just as critical as any other component. Aloha, just seeing if any of you guys ever check this. I would love to hear your voices. Miss you so much, love you, bye. The place I've been living for the past eight months is this weird mix of Mars and Earth, um, where I don't have my earthly responsibilities, but then also it doesn't have some of the hardships of Mars. It doesn't have the, the danger, which, so I didn't have to live in fear that my oxygen is gonna go away. I'm, I'm gonna die on Mars. Um, so it's a, it's a weird combination of, of otherworldliness and Earth. The real Mars I've never been on, but uh, what we simulated here, it's, uh, it's very isolated from the rest of the world. Um, and I guess to me, Mars is really lonely until we get more people there. Six people is not enough uh, to make you feel like you're part of a community or a society. Eight months not going more than a mile away from the HAB, and it was such a small area. I've never been in that confinement before. Anytime we went outside the dome, we had to be like looking through plastic because we were in a suit. Everything was all dull and blurry. And uh, so to come out here and like see the world like, with my own eyes and how crisp and the colors, and it's just, it's incredible. <laughs> Just recently, they just ended an exploration on Mars. A simulation. A simulation of living on Mars, on our slopes of Mauna Loa. I'm smiling because that is something that uh, is ridiculous for them to even think of things like that. When we are not protecting the Honua. Honua means Earth. They're putting their telescopes on top of our sacred temple 
And then you go up to the top of our mountains and there's these big, huge satellites that just takes away the whole spirituality. And it hurts us when stuff like this happens where they have a visitor center and they speak Greek mythology over here. And I guess we could do a laser light show. So if somebody's got the Dark Side of the Moon album they could put on, that would be really cool. So when these scientists and these foreigners want to tell us that Mauna Kea is the most ideal place in the world to build a telescope, I'm not going to disagree with that. Our ancestors knew that. We, we, we use the mountain to study the stars. However, the most ideal place in the world for the telescope does not make it the right place. Hawaiians love astronomy. They were like the first astronomers that could sail across thousands of miles into the deep sea, not even knowing if there's land. As, as human beings, we're so resourceful and we, we explore. That's what we do as humans. So Mars is out there. We have the technology to get there. It's just a matter of time. They're not sure about it. It's our theory. Mars is a theoretical thing that they're saying that they can maybe sustain life up there. So just in case they get there, they need to make sure that they can survive just a little bit more. You know, changing our surroundings is kind of the name of the game, human-wise. I think that as a species, that's definitely in our future. Our people, our ancestors, were masters in fitting in with their environment. Our ways of life need to adapt to the environment, not the other way around. We're going to be living on Mars on our own planet. Now, is that what they're practicing? Because they might not get to Mars, so they're going to do it here? Or they must be Martians. A mission to Mars, by its very nature, is sustainable. You have to recycle everything. <laughs> so a lot of the technologies that we're developing and advancing are just as applicable here on Earth. Look at the stars above. It's beautiful. Not gonna feed us. It's not gonna feed us. We need to feed ourselves. Take care of our home first before you go look for another home. I miss the smell of grass, warm sand, <laughs> trees. I miss being in water. More? <laughs> oh man, I feel like I'm going to list everything the earth is. <laughs> My crew members are still playing that board game. It's crazy, crazy. Um, it's called the galaxy, and there's like God, hundreds of pieces. I don't know what the heck they're doing, but it's all over the floor, it's just like game boards, and they're really into it. Looks fun, but not for me today. <laughs> Oka po e ia lo ha i ka a i na.